All right, it's two o'clock. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the 2018 Year in Closing Tips and Tricks webinar, our latest addition to our Ongoing Business Solution Partners webinar series. Today, we're going to speak about preparing for the year end close process, review the latest features in NetSuite 2018.2 related to the period end close, and demonstrate the process in NetSuite from the closing checklist through the period close. This NetSuite Tips and Tricks webinar is brought to you by Business Solution Partners. We're purveyors of cloud-based business and financial management solutions for modern enterprise. We are an Oracle NetSuite solution partner and have earned the four-star partner status in 2018. We represent a wide variety of software and process solutions supported by training to ensure that your company succeeds in the modern business environment. Our staff is made up of CPAs, accountants, marketing, sales, and operations specialists, and business management professionals offering a mix of strategic consulting and professional services centered around SaaS solutions. I'm Craig Cook, the Chief Marketing Officer for Business Solution Partners, and together here with my team, John Schaefer, Antonio Postella, and Michelle Cronley, we would like to welcome you to this important webinar and our last webinar of the 2018 season. I'd like to take a minute to acknowledge today's webinar coordinator, Michelle Coronelli. Michelle is responsible for all of the outreach, communication, and registration processes. Thanks, Michelle, for helping to get all of our attendees here today. We're going to get kicked off in just a few minutes here, but right now, I'd like to take an opportunity to go over some housekeeping notes for today's one-hour webinar. Our webinar audience is set to listen-only mode, but this doesn't mean we don't want to hear from you. Please take a minute to familiarize yourself with the Zoom webinar interface and find the Q&A button. If you have questions about anything in our presentation, don't be shy. Type your question into the Q&A interface. When appropriate, your, moderator, your moderators may chime in with your questions to our presenters or wait till the end of the webinar to address your queries. At the end of our session, we will have an open Q&A forum where you will have an additional opportunity to participate. Please use the same questions interface to pose your questions, and we may selectively unmute participants to probe deeper. After today's webinar, you can expect to receive an email follow-up with the presentation deck and webinar recording before the end of the week. Finally, before I hand the baton over to John so that we can get started, here's a quick look at our agenda. We're going to go over preparing for the year-end close, new features in 2018.2. We'll take a demo of the year-end close process. We'll have some closing remarks and a Q&A session. Excellent. Thank you for bearing with us. We're ready to get started. It's my pleasure to introduce your first speaker today. John Schaefer is the Director of ERP Consulting for Business Solution Partners and our NetSuite Practice Director. John has been working with Business Solution Partners for over 20 years. He directs all engagement with our NetSuite clients and serves as our lead platform consultant. As a certified public accountant, he brings his deaf financial business expertise to the plate for our clients. John, thanks so much. I'm going to pass the presentation over to you. Hi, Craig. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction and uh, welcome everyone to uh, our year-end uh, closing webinar. Um, and so um, I'd like to kind of kick things off by uh, talking a little bit about some uh, tasks that you might want to do or consider doing uh, before actually getting into the NetSuite software and running the year-end close process in NetSuite. You know, basically some tips or tricks that might help uh, help things go smoother for you at year-end. So in preparing for the year-end close, there are a couple of things uh, you may want to consider or look at doing. Uh, one of the things we suggest is basically looking at the status of prior year audit findings. So, you know, you had uh, journal entries that were given to you last year by your uh, accountants, you may want to uh, look at those entries and then consider making those adjustments uh, for the current year uh, as well. So you could avoid those um, items at year end. The uh, other thing is you may want to take a look at is balance sheet items that require uh, some type of uh, adjustment and scheduling. So looking at things like your prepaids, your accruals, uh, depreciation, all of those uh, things would be very helpful um, in, in kind of getting you on the uh, path for year-end close and having a successful year-end close. 
Um, the other thing is looking at status of balance sheet reconciliation. So um, particularly any kind of schedules that you would prepare uh, towards the end of the year. Um, looking at things like accrual, prepaid schedules. Um, if you're running NetSuite uh, depreciation in NetSuite, uh, you want to make sure that you've run the last um, the last uh, depreciation procedure before the year end close to make sure that you know you've captured that. And if you're not using NetSuite for uh, depreciation, then you would want to at least make sure you know you've got those entries booked into your system. And then um, lastly, looking at um, the roles and responsibilities that your team members take on during the uh, actual year and close process. So, you know, who is going to be handling what accounts, what reconciliations, um, has there been turnover or change in your accounting department that you have to look at and consider uh, maybe uh, things need to be revisited. Um, anything like that would be uh, important to take a look at. Okay, so all of those uh, items would be all things you would want to do uh, prior to getting involved with the year-end close. Now, there's a new feature that's been enabled in 2018.2, uh, and this is a period and journal uh, feature. So prior to 2018.2, um, in NetSuite, you never had the P&L close out to retained earnings as in typical accounting systems, right? A lot of uh, systems, typically, you have your uh, P&L at the end of the year after booking all your adjustments, zeroes out and books an adjustment. Uh, adjusting entry into your retained earnings account. So prior to 2018.2, that was really, um, you didn't have that option. NetSuite basically handled that via the reporting engine. However, in 2018.2, they've enabled a feature uh, on a per subsidiary basis and per book basis where you can have NetSuite post a entry to zero out the P&L and book the entry into retained earnings. Um, and basically to access that feature, you would go into setup, company, enable features, and accounting. And under the advanced features, you would find this uh, checkbox called period and journal entries. Um, once checking that checkbox, that would enable this feature at the company level. Okay, once you click on the checkbox, you probably will get a notification. Um, and if you're running uh, One World and you have multiple subsidiaries, you would have to also enable um, this feature at the subsidiary level. So you basically, this is just a notification and you would just uh, click OK to move through this and that would bring you up to um, the next uh, setup task you would have to do. So. The final step in enabling this would be actually to enable this feature for each subsidiary that you are going to be, uh, you want NetSuite to post this closing entry to. So if we take a look here on, you would go to setup company and subsidiaries and you would call up each subsidiary that you would want. In this case, if you look in the left column, I've uh, selected my headquarters subsidiary. And then you would see on the right in the uh, last column, um, there is a checkbox that allows you to enable uh, period and closing entries uh, for this subsidiary. So by checking this box, that would enable it for this subsidiary. Okay, so one thing to note here is that um, once you check the box to enable the period and journal entries. Um, you can uncheck the box uh, if you decide that you don't want to use it, but you can't disable that feature if the subsidiary um, already has period and transactions posted into it. So if you've enabled the feature and you've actually gone through a year end close and um, actually had the system create the period and journal. Uh, you wouldn't be able to turn the feature off unless you uh, deleted those period and journals, then you could disable the feature. 
And as far as if you're using a, a multi-book uh, subsidiary, uh, I'm sorry, multi-book, you would also have to enable the feature um, in the specific books that you want this to happen. So that's just something else to keep in mind. Okay, so what does this um, new feature do for you? All right, basically it'll generate income statement closing journals at the subsidiary uh, level for each fiscal year end uh, to close the net, net income out into retained earnings. So it'll zero out your P&L for you. Um, it can also generate income summary journals to post net income to another account, uh, not retained earnings, some other account, uh, prior posting to retained earnings. So in some localizations, um, specifically Germany and France, um, this is a requirement. And so NetSuite has that option for those localizations. Uh, likely, uh, probably not applying to many people here, but it is something to note. Um, the feature will also generate consolidation journals at each period end and uh, consolidation journals record the change in the child subsidiary since the beginning of the period into the parent using the CTA account, cumulative translation adjustment account. So if you're doing consolidations, it would have an impact there. Um, it will generate balance sheet closing journals for the year end and opening journals for the new year. And the opening balance journal is a requirement for a uh, France tax audit file. So this FEC file, again, uh, this is probably a very specific, um, you know, requirement for a specific localization, likely not many people here uh, impacting, but it, it, it is something that, uh, you know, to note. Um, the period end journals do uh, follow the GL audit numbering feature. So if you have that feature enabled, um, it will follow those, uh, that audit numbering um, methodology uh, for any statutory compliance. Um, another good thing about the feature is it generates period end journals by each distinct general ledger segment. So if you're using um, class, um, department, location, or if you're using any custom segments and, and the custom segments that would um, be impacted here or get involved would be ones that have the GL impact box checked. Um, if you're using custom segments, uh, you may know that uh, you can choose to have these segments impact the general ledger or not. Um, so this would be um, a concern for where you have that checkbox checked off. If you were using uh, custom segments that were non-GL impacting, it would uh, not be a um, an issue there or wouldn't impact any of the functionality there. But if you do, uh, the period and journal entry should follow along with those custom segments. So that's nice. It keeps your um, segmentation through uh, into your balance sheet. Um, there's also some additional search um, that you can do. So you'll be able to search period end journals using a uh, standard uh, NetSuite save search functionality and the search bar um, and all that good stuff. So there, these basically are transactions that are um, separate from a standard journal entry and they're isolated and they're actually referred to as a period end journal entry or a period end entry. Now, um, there are also some reports that are impacted and some new reports that have been introduced with this uh, new feature. So if you enable that, uh, some of these reports would be impacted and you might have access to even some new reports. So the post-closing trial balance is a new report that would be um, given to you now and that you could use if this feature is enabled to run reporting. And the existing general ledger and account register reports, basically those reports have been enhanced or uh, you know, given some additional functionality so that you can run them in what's called a period end mode uh, to do some additional reporting. So these are some uh, new features or new reports that are added and changes to existing reports uh, to kind of make adoption of this um, feature uh, easier for you. All right, so 
Um, one good thing or uh, another good thing that NetSuite has kind of taken into account here is that the enhancements are basically uh, can be introduced into the system without changes to existing reports uh, to minimize any impact on your uh, financial reports and workflows. So uh, with there shouldn't really be many changes to your existing workflow and reports that you run out of NetSuite. Um, and but, you know, I would also suggest that if you have a sandbox, that you try this in a sandbox first, uh, test it out. We always recommend any time you're introducing new features or um, new procedures like this where you're going to act the setup of the system, that you try to do this in a sandbox environment first to verify, you know, that it's not impacting any uh, substantial procedure or reporting that you have in place. So again, NetSuite is saying that uh, this there really shouldn't be many changes. Um, however, you know, when possible, I, you know, we always suggest to try to test that out on your own, okay, and, and verify for yourself that there is, you know, no impact to you, okay. So these are basically some new features. Again, it's a, a new preference that you would have to enable at the uh, overall company level, like we talked about. Um, you would have to enable it on a per subsidiary basis if you are running uh, One World, which is the multi entity uh, version of NetSuite. And then also on the specific books if you're using multi book, the multi book feature in NetSuite. So, three places to consider that you would have to enable or make some small changes to your setup. Great. John, thanks so much. Um, I think we all appreciate your insights into preparing for the period close and leveraging the new functionality in 2018.2. Uh, um, but I think it's time we see some of these processes in action. Um, that means it's demo time. Um, while we're firing up our Oracle NetSuite demo portal, I'm going to introduce you to our next speaker, uh, Business Solution Partners Senior NetSuite Consultant, Antonio Pocello. Uh, Antonio is our NetSuite Ninja, working on, working on the ground with our clients to provide a wide variety of NetSuite administrative and support functions. He has a, a dedicated a portion of his studies to Lean Process, and he's our resident Six Sigma and Kaizen Ambassador. Um, and I'll also point out that Antonio only provided us with two bullet points, uh, so I made up that third one there. Um, Antonio, by now I'm sure you're all prepared with our NetSuite demo, um, so I'm going to pass the baton over to you. Um, please share your screen and let's get moving. Antonio, we can't hear you. I don't know if you're muted. Yeah. Okay. I got it. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Can, can you see my uh, screen? Thank you. Yes, we do. Okay. Thanks everyone for joining. I'm just going to do the demo uh, of closing the, the year end. Uh, generally, it's the same process as closing every month. Uh, so you go to set up company or set up accounting manage accounting periods i'm going to show you that hierarchy again accounting manage accounting periods all right and when we go here you can see i have a lot of years here uh, i haven't closed we're going to work in 2015 so i've closed every month but the last month in december all right <clears throat> just a little bit about this page uh, you'll notice up here there's some buttons this is where you set up your additional years new quarters or if you need to modify periods Generally, the setup full year is used. The closed multiple periods is a setting I have enabled. That allows me to, uh, I'm going to click it in here a second, it allows me to close all these periods backwards going from beginning on time till now uh, without going into each checklist and closing it. So this setting, when you click it, uh, basically you choose the period that you're closing up until, and it's going to go through and just close every period and lock every GL. So here you can see in December 2015, I do not have the period closed as a green check mark. However, I do have AP and AR transactions locked. So what happens is, is generally at the beginning of the month, people are going to, companies want to lock their AR and lock their AP. What this means is you can't post transactions or edit transactions that are already posted to these sub -ledgers. Uh, here you can lock all, which is locking all other transactions that posted a ledger that aren't specifically part of these ledgers. Uh, you simply do this by clicking one here, and you can see uh, 
I hit mark all and you can choose your subsidiary. You could go through and mark them all or you can lock just a specific subsidiary if you'd like. And it works the same way as the lock AP. You could go through and choose a specific subsidiary or you can click mark all and then you click submit and that goes through and locks those ledgers so the transactions can be posted to or modified. <clears throat> However, if you do not lock all subsidiaries here, you cannot go through to the next point. Do you see how this has a gray arrow <clears throat> with an orange lock here? Even if I were to go through and lock all for one subsidiary here or just a couple here, but not the rest, and I hit submit, You'll see here that I still can't go through to, I can't close a single subsidiary without locking the transactions for all subsidiaries. Uh, so that's just all I'm trying to point out to there. Additionally, once I lock here and I go to this and I go to mark all, I'm gonna hit submit. All right, and I'm going to see now a green mark. And over here, you can see the status is completed. You can see who, who modified this last. And then you get this green circle with the three dots, meaning that this is now ready to be worked on. All right, so I'm going to go through here and click this checklist. By the way, you will see things here. If you do use NetSuite, you will see some items listed here to check off that you may or may not have. I may not have things that you have. It's all depending on the settings. This is a one world environment and it is using inventory and it is using foreign uh, currencies or multiple currencies. So you do see some of those. And uh, <clears throat> in addition uh, to move on, I will click here on the screen box and it will bring open the ability to resolve date and period mismatches. Anyone who works in NetSuite would understand that financial reports we're looking at are mostly looking at uh, accounting period on the transaction where other reports could be looking at the date. So NetSuite likes to be when they're the same, likes to be when they're the same. So here you can go in and click resolve, resolve date period mismatches. And you can see I have some here and it's telling me the transaction date is 2015 here, but my period name, my period is December. So they're mismatch. That may be okay for you. In this case, it's a bill. So maybe that is the case. Maybe the date is here, but you want it to post in a different period. That's okay. It's just bringing it to your attention uh, to make it the cleanest. So I'm actually going to go, if you go to the invoice here and I click edit, actually I'm going to open a new tab. Let's let this load. Generally, after you fix the invoice, all it's going to do is uh, change the date on the invoice to match the posting period and save it up. It seems like it's loading now. Here we go. So I can say, oh, this wasn't supposed to be 11 five. It was supposed to be 12 five. Someone made a mistake. And this is going to let you come over here and choose 12 five. And I can hit save. So now they match. Uh, if they mismatch, there are different settings to allow this or to disallow this. And there are settings to prompt you too when there's a mismatch upon creation of these transactions. See, it's just telling me it's, that's a different, that prompt that you saw was because this system has warranties set up. So that's not a, has nothing to do with the dates. So here we go to back to period close. We're going to let this save for a second. There it goes. All right. Great. So after we do that, we, we mark the task to complete because we've changed all our GLs, uh, posting transactions to be the same date and period that we felt was necessary. You can see the status displays here. <clears throat> the next option is to review negative inventory. If you're using inventory, NetSuite wants you to uh, review and fix any of the negatives. You click on the green arrow. It brings you to this page. You click review negative inventory. And it's going to show you a report. You can filter this report basically by location or by as of date. In this case, it's going to be the end of December. And the idea here is this, okay, here's all your negatives. You should go through and do adjustments and whatever is necessary to make sure that these are not negative and fix your inventory values. 
Once you're done, you hit back to period close. You hit mark task complete. <clears throat> it's going to bring you back to the list. The next one is review inventory cost accounting. So NetSuite has a, a costing engine, and at the end of the uh, period or the end of the year, you it wants to reevaluate and basically make sure there's nothing here displaying when you click this button. So you can't go past this point if this says, you know, two items left for calculations or four items left or one item. That means that hey, you got to stop here. NetSuite's costing engines recalculating, and you have to wait. This does say, though, the cost calculations under inventory within this period have been completed, and the process is not running, which is great. So we're okay to hit back to period, and we're good, okay to hit mark task complete. So it's just closing out your uh, inventory costing based on whatever costing method you may be using. The next here is review inventory activity, and this is just a last chance to see what's in the inventory, what's happened. Uh, this is basically an inventory activity report. All right. So you can see here, it's just showing you by item, the quantities, the ins and the outs, and all the activity for the item. So you review that. If you're set with that, hit back. You hit mark task complete. And it brings you to the next one. This, this uh, environment is using multiple currencies, so it does have foreign currency exchange balances. Uh, at the end of the period, oh, did, sorry, I skipped the intercompany adjustments, my apologies. Uh, this company uses intercompany time and expenses, this demo account. And so it has this area here for readjusting and doing intercompany adjustments. So there are none here because I don't have any submitted. So we're just going to hit go to the next. It submits. And we're done. So you hit back to period close. Mark task complete. And uh, you go to the next. The next is the revalue open currencies. So at the end of the month, it's going to take your currencies and it's going to do a revaluation. There's so a lot of information in NetSuite uh, Suite Answers about the currency revaluation and what happens in the background. You're welcome to look that up. Several articles. So it's not all accounts are set up for currency revaluation, and not all of them should be. Uh, you set them up from the account to be part of the month-end currency revaluation if they should be. In this case, you can choose to reevaluate some accounts and not others by checking or not checking the box. Uh, you can also do it by subsidiary. These are filters up here. If you had these as well as filters, you could use those. Um, you can filter by account type. All right. So in this case, I'm just going to select all, and I'm going to click Save. And then I'm going to mark task as complete. And you see the status here. We'll go to check. All right. The next is, is for the consolidated exchange rates. This is for reporting pur reporting purposes. So if you use in a one world environment, we have multiple companies in different currencies. The base currency of the parent company, when you run your income statement, a consolidated income statement, NetSuite has to run this to be able to do the consolidated exchange rates. So when you run your consolidated report, you get the correct exchange rate based on the base currency of the parent subsidiary. So I'm going to go in here and click on the green check mark. And I'm going to simply click consolidated exchange rates, calculate consolidated exchange rates. It's going to bring you to this view here. There's several different types of different several different ways NetSuite does the exchange rate consolidation, depending on the hierarchy of your subsidiaries. Uh, some you can calculate by hand, some you can go in and edit, and some you can't even touch because they don't need to be there like one-to-ones like this. So it's going from USD to USD. Uh, in this case, we're just going to click calculate here. This will recalculate all the ones that can be calculated. And then we go back to period close, and we hit mark task complete. This brings us to the intercompany uh, the elimination transactions for intercompany eliminations. If you have an elimination subsidiary and you perform intercompany eliminations using NetSuite One World, 
you can click in here and uh, <clears throat> you can run the intercompany elimination. It's going to bring you into a list of, of course, there are none, but it's going to bring you to a list of intercompany eliminations that would be necessary. And you can click save. <laughs> and here's the results here of that. So it runs, that's basically running a script, which is going to show you results of the eliminations uh, from currencies. Uh, and currency exchange and amounts, and then I'll show you the elimination journal. And then you mark task as complete. And we're at the final step. So once you're done with everything here, this is the simple one. You just click close. So at this point, you're closing the period. So I click close. All right. So you can see it locks all these. I can't mess with this. No one can post. Uh, however, you can reopen a period. Uh, those with permissions and administrators can reopen a period. So, oh, I apologize. All right. And all you do is you just click on the arrow here that you click on it to bring up the thing. You, you got to put in some justification. So I'm just going to put test for right now. And you hit reopen. It's going to tell you that it's going to reopen all the subsequent periods the periods before it. So for example, if I went to, this is December, if I went to January in 2015, it would open February, March, April, May, June, July. So it opened all the ones after it. So this is going to open just this because it is the last one. If I had periods uh, set before this that were closed, they would have opened as well or after this, I should say. So if I had periods in 2016 that were closed as well, they would have just opened based on what I did. So I'm going to click list up here. It's going to bring me back to my counting periods. You can see here that I, that I have these locked for December, but I don't have them closed. So if I go back to the checklist, you could actually unlock these as well the same way. I could do that because I have to lock everything again, but you can you know, unmark all, mark all, you could click close or you could choose which ones you could click submit. And it would lock or unlock some periods. But if you do that, it's going to, you have to reclose all of this. It's going to take all of this away. So I'm going to go back here and close. I'm going to close period. And just as the very last piece of the demo, I'm going to use the, uh, go back to list. I'm going to use the click, quick close. It does take a few moments if you're trying to quick close an entire year. So I don't think we're going to sit there and watch it, but I can come here, see De to December 2016 is not closed. I can click close multiple periods. I'm going to choose December 2016 and hit submit. It's going to basically say that you're not doing all the tasks. It's just going to close everything. You hit OK, and it runs. And once this is done here, it takes a few minutes, depending on how many periods you're trying to close. If it's just one, it's a few seconds. Uh, it takes a few moments to close all these periods, and then you'll see they would all go to green check mark. They would all get their transactions locked. Uh, that is the end of the demo. Great. Thank you, Antonio. Um, can you please stop your share and I'll start up again and we're going to throw it back to John. So, uh, Antonio, thank you for the great demo. Uh, John, uh, we're going to reintroduce. He's going to talk a little bit about these NetSuite tools and how business solution partners can help. Uh, and then we're going to move into our Q&A session. So, John, um, to summarize what uh, what Antonio definitely demoed, uh, please continue. Thanks, Craig. Uh, thanks, Antonio, for the demo. I think that was a good uh, walkthrough of uh, the year-end close. Um, so, kind of to you know wrap up the whole uh, you know year-end closing and and NetSuite. Um, you know, the NetSuite processes. A couple of things you, you know, we want to make people aware of. Uh, first of all is, you know, there are, uh, NetSuite does do updates um, two times a year. And currently the current release right now is 2018.2. And so as I mentioned before, you know, there new features are introduced. And so uh, like the new feature, we, you know, we talked about earlier, you know, you want to keep an eye out for these updates that NetSuite puts out um, on your homepage. If you have the new release portlet available, you should be able to access uh, from that portlet uh, the list of new features for that release in the coming release. Uh, 
so that you can review them and see if there are any features there that are, um, you know, things you might be interested in or, you know, um, maybe things you want to read more about to, you know, or get more information on to see if they'll be useful for you. So you want to keep, a, you know, keep on top of the NetSuite updates that are out there and, you know, the new release portlet and, you know, be on the look for these things. You know, you can get a lot of great information from them. Um, the other thing is uh, NetSuite does give you the ability to have a release preview where you can test um, your existing data under the new features that NetSuite provides. Um, NetSuite has moved to a, a process where you have to actually now request for a release preview. So um, if you, they're not going to automatically provide it to you. So if you, you know, that's something you plan on taking advantage of, and I would suggest that everyone do, you know, be prepared to reach out to NetSuite to get yourself on the list to get a release preview so that you can have, um, you know, have that environment to work with. And if you have any questions on that, I'm sure we can provide you with more information on how you would go about doing that. Um, also from the help center, of course, uh, and the support center, there's always training videos and uh, places where you can get additional, you know, search for sweet answers and get some additional help regarding year end close and or any of the other features that are in NetSuite, new features, um, all of those, you know, any questions that generally you have, that's a good starting point to go. And finally, uh, you can always come, of course, to us. We have our help desk, which is available um, throughout the day. You can file a support request um, or call, and we'll be happy to try to help you with any questions or problems you have. Um, and, uh, you know, especially as it comes to year-end close, feel free to reach out um, in advance, you know, with any questions. A lot of times towards year-end, it gets a little busier. So if you can kind of, um, you know, get um get a list of those questions together sooner than later and get them to us you know we can definitely uh help you in a, a much more timely fashion than um you know if it waits towards uh year end when everybody's closing around the same time so um hopefully you found this information helpful um and the demo helpful and uh you know we look forward to uh any questions feedback and uh you know seeing you on future demos so if there are questions, uh, I'm, Craig, I'm, you'll, I'll let you uh, kind of go about administering uh, that process. All right, John, Antonio, thank you so much for uh, your efforts today. Um, while Antonio was giving the demo portion, there was a rousing conversation uh, in our Q&A panel uh, between Christy and John. Uh, Christy asked the stumper, and, and while the demo was happening, John tracked down the information. Um, Christy asked, how do these period and journal entries affect prior year balances for multi-year reporting? Will it correct the prior year's income statement, RE balances? Uh, so John, what did you find out about that? Right, so um, you know, I, I, I actually told Christy that that's something that I'm gonna have to look into a little bit because this is a new feature from NetSuite and I haven't run into that scenario yet. Um, as I, I mentioned to her, uh, my best a guess is that uh, NetSuite will continue to report on those um, periods as it did before, because um, once that feature is enabled, there is a um, a new entry made into the closing checklist. And I'm guessing by not having completed that particular item for a prior year, you know, NetSuite won't have have posted the uh, closing entry. Um, the other possibility is that NetSuite may allow you to just manually post the closing entry or import that, but that I, I, I have to uh, kind of look at. So I'm going to look into that and get back to uh, Christy. And, you know, if anyone else is interested, you know, we can get attention to you as well. Great. Um, I'd also like to encourage anybody to use the Q&A panel at this time to raise your hands and ask a question. Uh, we've got another question coming in. Um, how do retained earnings work now uh, if it's not in an account? So uh, could you, ex is, could you, I'm not quite following that question. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer that one, John. Okay. So if NetSuite doesn't have a retained earnings account now, that's the new feature that's been, that, that's been released. Uh, the reporting in NetSuite 
rolls up what would be in the retained earnings into a row on the report itself. So you don't post to an account, retained earnings account, and that's what handles what would be in your retained earnings through reporting. Excellent, excellent. All right, um, we've got just a few more minutes here. I think we're gonna end a little early today. We, we blazed through that demo. Um, so enjoy the uh, additional 20 minutes in your day, uh, but we are going to wrap up here. Um, some additional housekeeping notes. Uh, a hey, reminder Craig, I think that we have one more question. Oh, we have one more question. Okay. Let's go back. Okay. The question so, is, uh, what happens if you make an entry to a prior period after you have closed the retain, retained earnings? Does it make a second entry or replace the first one? So uh, this is, again, if, this is, if you're using the new feature, um, uh, that is, again, something else I think we have to flag uh, and see as how that will be handled with, uh, with the new feature. I'm, I believe it's going to make a second entry because, um, you know, I, I don't see NetSuite deleting an existing entry replacing an existing entry, but that's something, you know, I, I'll look into as well. So we'll keep that on the list too. Excellent. And John, um, Steve is asking a question on the Q&A panel. Can you uh, summarize that and uh, give us a little description of what he's asking and a reply, please? Sure. So uh, let's see, Steve is saying, just to clarify on the multi-period close, it allows you to quickly prevent posting related to A R A P G L, but you still have to follow through the remaining steps separately. Okay, so Antonio, can you just comment on? Uh... So the multiple period close isn't locking. So the locking and closing are separate functionalities. Uh, it's actually closing the account. It's actually going to do all of those things we did on the checklist. It's going to do all of it. It's going to run the revaluations and do all of that for all of those periods. So, no. Multiple period close is not allowing you to quickly prevent the posting. The only way to prevent the posting is to go into that period and mark it as locked or lock all. Right. And I think Steve is also not seeing that as a available option. So I, I believe that is uh, something that they have to enable, right? It's accounting setting. Yes. It's a setting under accounting preferences. And Steve says Coolio in the question and answers panel. So awesome. I think we answered his question. Um, Great, um, a rousing uh, a round of applause uh, virtually, even though everybody's muted for uh, John Schaefer, uh, Antonio Postella. A big thank you to Michelle Cronley for uh, helping us get this uh, webinar off the ground. And uh, to all of you, thank you so much for joining us uh, on behalf of our team today. Uh, we really appreciate you being here. Um, the recording of this demo will be delivered before the end of the week, um, along with the slides from the presentation. Um, we hope you found it very useful. Uh, we are Business Solution Partners. Uh, you can contact us here. Uh, we're very happy to pick up the phone and answer any of your questions regarding the year end close. Um, thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar in 2019.